This podcast is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to provide medical advice. It exists to inform and to entertain. Ooh, uh, additional disclaimer about this week's episode. So Mike got to write an episode. We do let him do that from time to time. And uh, given the topic he picked, I just wanted to put a word out there that if you're adverse to hearing discussions that have to do with male sex genitalia, this is probably not the episode for you. I mean, you might have guessed it by the title, but just in case, there will be some discussion of procedure done to male genitalia in a non-graphic form, but it's in there, just so you know that too. Just wanted to mention it. Now let's get to it. Welcome, everyone. This is Poor Historians, a podcast misadventuring into the archives of medical history and beyond. Each show, we dissect a history of medicine topic from the past to learn a little something about how medicine got to be the way that it is today. I'm Dr. Max, and I'm joined here by my good friends and colleagues, Dr. Aaron. What's up? And Dr. Mike. I miss Alba. Where's Alba? I I know. That was going to be my line. (laughs) I beat you to it. (laughs) Oh, well. What do do we call this? We call this a doctor's lounge because interns aren't allowed? Oh, yeah. Ooh, there we go. Well, it's not that Alba wasn't allowed. She just had another obligation at this time, so was not able to record this one with us. We will be Alba-less. We will try to plot ahead and try to remember that at one time, this show was Alba-less, but it, it just doesn't feel right. We have to yeah. do it anyway. We have but to I'll tell show. you, she's going to be happy that she's not here today, FYI. <laughs> oh, oh, good. <laughs> I feel like well, her perspective might be important for whatever you're going to talk about. I don't even know what it is yet. Mm. Well, before we get to that, Uh, We do have another entrant, another patron, if you will, to the Medical History House of Medicine. And so even without Alba here, I'm going to ask you guys to do your absolute best to welcome this person. And we have to welcome Michelle to the group of fellows, mind you. Oh, my gosh. We're fellow heavy. She happens to be an OG subscriber to this podcast, like one of the first ever. And she joined us over here on Patreon. So we we need an excellent... I'll be at Alba list. Thank you for Michelle. What do you guys got? Give it up for Michelle. It's going to be a hard road, Michelle. We're going to break you down and then build you up. <laughs> it's weird. It's a weird shout out. Was it a residency thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 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 I, I get what you're no, okay. going for. I, I actually told somebody for. this weekend, because we were talking about like how we deal with challenging things in the emergency department. And I was like, you know, a lot of us just pretend like we're fine or we feel like we're fine especially the physicians we are broken down into our component <laughs> parts and our humanity was ripped from us and they built us back into the image of okay dr yeah. conrad so <laughs> michelle that, that's a thank you in mike's world uh, that's a dr mike thank you it's it's unique but it is all all yours so <laughs> thank you very much for the support and welcome to the uh, hall of fellows here so if you would like to support the show and get a weird Thank you from Mike like that. Uh, that might, the dark welcome might be the way we go. Uh, and then check out our Patreon page at www.patreon.com forward slash poor historians podcast. I was going to ask if you had any words of wisdom for Michelle as a new fellow, but I'm afraid to know what they are, Mike. Well, I lost my wisdom tooth. It's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that is true. Words of wisdom for a fellow would be Google Pro Vigil. All right, there we go. Kind of a, we are not sponsored by any drug companies. I might Mm-mm. want to add that right now. Oh, All how right. about this? Yeah, you're going to be asked to have the responsibility of an attending, but you'll be paid like a resident. Yeah. <laughs> that, one, that one hits close to home for my immediate future. <laughs> yeah, right. But we'll get to that some other time. Right now, let's go on to Mike's trivia. So, Mike, are you ready I'm for this one? This, this is a weird one, and it Good. sort of has a callback to a few episodes ago. In a very roundabout way. And that's a pun that you don't understand right now until I say it. (laughs) Oh, I'm going to say it right now. So the asker of this question is Dan. And he wanted to know if you happen to know what is rotational therapy and who invented it? Rotational. Because, you know, we'll get around to it. See. Yeah. No. Yeah. Rotational therapy was a weird therapy. Um, Initially, it was like late 1800s. I think 1890 became really popular with um, Kellogg and his institute. It was really to treat piles. Um, and piles now we call them hemorrhoids. So the rotational therapy would be that you would sit on this stool 
that had a device that would go into your rectum and then you would spin. So the, the terminology sit and spin that comes from rotational therapy. 1890. Aaron's head is in his hand. Dr. Kellogg, Ohio. 18- it's so good. It's so, it's so good out of nowhere. I mean, it that's, is, um, that's improvisational genius right there. <laughs> I was actually a little worried when you started it that you might have known the answer just because you, you kind of got off to a strong start. Everything else Ooh. you said after that was wrong, but the, the start is where it was. So Mike, rotational therapy is what happens when you take a game that children play, not what you said, not at all what you said, and <laughs> try to use it to torture patients in the name of science. And the fault of this, its creation might be shared between a gentleman named Dr. Joseph Cox and Dr. Rasmus Darwin. I was close. I was trying to get past that really quickly. (laughs) So these are two 18th century English physicians who figured out that spinning what they deemed, quote, unruly patients around in a chair, kind of later, more of a, uh, just a whole device. Like it was kind of this, I don't know, think of a, like those suspended chairs that are in the hooks that you might see at like Costco. It's sort of like a mm-hmm. one person thing. Anyway, think about it's... something that kind of looks like that with a big crank, like an old timey hand drill on top. And uh, basically what they do, they put patients, usually, unfortunately, uh, psychiatric patients in these chairs and they would just spin them and spin them and spin them in place. You know, like the little kids game where they spin in a circle and you get all sick and you fall over and vomit and laugh. Well, they would do this to these patients because they felt that it would subdue them. It would make them more ruly. And they honestly would make the patients promise to like not be mentally ill anymore or else you get the spinning chair again. <laughs> oh, and that's like, I just, it, that's kind of what it, it did. It did not work, but it mm-hmm. was in practice for way longer than uh, it would be deemed uh, oh. pertinent. Oh, hi, cat. Joined by my cat. I mean, <laughs> it, it more or less like patients who were, psychotic etc it was like oh put them in the spinning chair and like they're they're so nauseated that they don't they don't you know they they don't care anymore but like i said there's a darwin connection because erasmus darwin uh is the person who developed the like more official device to doing this um i have a picture of this i forgot to send it to you guys but i will send it to you afterwards and that won't be as helpful for this episode but just like it's a guy with a big crank and another guy sitting in this like device under him, and the guy just apparently cranks it and spins this guy in, in a circle. Like think of it like a really out of control, t- like a, just a tilt a whirl that just never stops, you know. So the uh, one potential what, positive. Can I just say, have you ever seen somebody who's re- either really sad or really psychotic at an amusement park? Not including the midway. I mean, I've been the games. I've are. been the sad person <laughs> in amusement park because I don't like amusement parks. So yeah. Okay. But not psychotic. I mean, I feel that way after waiting in lines at a place I hate. So maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What if you really love just to queue? I love queuing. I hate you're, rides. I love queuing. You're not a Magic Kingdom fan, Max. You don't. I don't. I don't like any theme parks. Yeah. It's like it's like my least favorite experience in life. I'm a <laughs> wow. fun person. Uh, trust me. What if they didn't have a theme? What if they were vague parks? <laughs> what they what vague parks? <laughs> yeah. Like no theme. Like. Just over there, there's space. <laughs> over here, there's like I, cartoons. That'd be weird enough. I'd probably like it. Like, if you know me well enough, you're like, yeah, he, of course he would go there. Just random parks. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I am a fun person. Trust me. Just not, not in that venue. So the one potential positive is that the physicians of the time noted that when you do spin people like tops and then you bring them to a stop, that their eyes have all these weird characteristic movements that we call nystagmus. And we ascribe this to vertigo type symptoms where you have this um, usually a, a either inner ear or sometimes a neurologic kind of brain dysfunction that then can cause a spinning sensation or an imbalanced sensation. It makes your eyes bounce around a lot. Well, when they were spinning these patients, they were like, well, look at that. Their eyes keep doing the same movements. And so that was actually one of the early connections that was made between vertigo and certain eye movements. So there was kind of a... That's good probably job, the best guys. I could say that came out of Yay, it. Good science. job. Good job. Not much Yay, else. Science. Good job. But I'm going to say that we did stump. We did stump Mike. So uh, mm-hmm. that means we have to give Dan an eponym. And, and it just so happens that I found one right here. And, and uh, I don't have Elba to read it, which I'll have to do my best. But I admit, and I have been told by listeners that she is definitely better at it. Sorry. Just got me. Mm-hmm. So we. That agree week, a thousand percent. So much better. Appreciate that. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, so the eponym is Danoy Susceptive Equilibriosis. 
the noisiceptive wow. equilibriolosis. Equilibriolosis <laughs> is yeah. Well, I even I even I put hyphens and it still didn't help. All right. Well, th- what this is, uh, and I don't I have no idea why this condition occurs, but typically it affects people who are named Dan, who are particularly sensitive to odd stimuli. Basically, if they come into contact with a sensation that they find unpleasant, Dan's with this condition develop sudden vertigo, nausea, <laughs> and they display eerie giggling fits triggered by like very strange and disconnected occurrences. And, and like, the thing is, these like occurrences, tickling? well, n- not quite. I got a couple of examples. So these these occurrences would not bother like what we would call maybe more normal people. That's a loaded word. But these type of people, these specific dams are not really normal because they have this condition. And so some of these, uh, like some, here's some examples of these triggers. Like one of them could be like if you take tomatoes, and you like squish them a little bit and you just like rub them on their skin. Like they just like, <laughs> they flip out. Licking of teeth is a, is a weird one too. There's really, it's just one of those things that they just can't Like if stand. you lick their teeth or they lick their own teeth? <laughs> I think both. I think both, honestly. Like one of those is weirder than the other, but both, which is interesting. And then- You can lick uh, your teeth, you can lick your friends, but you it, can't lick your friend's <laughs> teeth. As long, well, as long as you have consent and you can do whatever you want. Depends how close your friend is. Uh, and then the, the other thing is like oddly shaped, like smaller diminutive pinky toes. If they see those, they just, they, they become completely like- disabled it, it it's, it's the weirdest thing and you know fortunately though this is a really rare syndrome among a very few people named dan uh, for which there has yet discovered to be a cure i feel and, like some uh, dan in the audience that i don't know just is catching strays right now I there feel like... is it's some very bitch, that's possible. me it's well <laughs> wait, 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 I wait, wait. Puke. <laughs> this particular syndrome affects a very few dans and so even rotational therapy won't help at this point <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Dan. Appreciate that. And if you'd like to send us a a, a, a Mike's trivia question, please uh, see the show notes and use the links to get over to our pages, and we'll get it to us, and we'll we'll put it up there. We'll we'll throw it to Mike. So nice try, Mike. Maybe next time. Thank you. I did my averagest. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can ask. All right. So we're we're here. Mike's got a, a topic. His face is freshly shorn. He mm-hmm. has no facial hair at all. Mm-hmm. It's glistening smooth. Well, there's a well, he's yeah, got like a little a, stubble. He's yeah, got a little five o'clock shadow. I can't tell because his face is washed out in redness. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with the lighting here. <laughs> you install one of those like. If only lamps, we had video you... episodes, dear listener. If only. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what you got? To, what, what are we talking about, Mike? All right. Well, you know how I like to do it. I like to keep you in the dark and keep it secret. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to do that this time. Okay. It's going to be straightforward. Mm. <laughs> There's going to be no questioning what this is. Hmm. Okay. All right. I'm going to set the stage. You right? You ready? What is it? It's it's 1989. Okay. All right. It's 1989. You're in a Aaron's emergency in his position. mid-20s. Mm-hmm. Hey. You're working the night so... shift. You're so tired that you could barely stand up straight. You're four hours into this really hard shift. And a 45-year-old, previously healthy patient comes in with complaints of a mild headache, heartburn, nasal congestion, and some other weird symptoms. What, what are the other weird symptoms? Well, um, skin flushing. Okay. was flushed. And he had a couple episodes of this weird disturbance in his color vision. He said that occasionally everything in his vision seems to be tinted blue. Hmm. Tinted blue. Okay. Mm. Hmm. Sir, I'm going to get you a chair here in the waiting room, and uh, the morning shift will be right in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's well, yeah, that's the one that, that one yeah that one stays red for a while <laughs> you see that blue vision you're like mm. oh mm. geez yeah they, they're gonna sit on the tracker for a little bit mm-hmm. all right cool so you said you weren't gonna keep us in the dark so what is it huh. Huh. nope yeah so it goes into an exam room and it just is ready for you to examine him <laughs> and to figure out why he's there i feel like we're still in the dark i can pretend to i'll, I'll pretend to look in his eyes do i do i see anything Nope, you don't see anything. You tried. You try to see his retina, and there's nothing because the pupil constricts down. And you tell him, can't really get a good view of the retina because we don't have the right equipment here. <laughs> you're in a super bright emergency room. and you see yep. a real eye yeah. doctor. And then you give him a wink. <laughs> All right, 1989. Where am I? You're in Patience, Colorado. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. That oh, sounds no. like a small town. I've mm-hmm. never even heard of that town. I, I grew up in Colorado. I haven't heard of that town. Yeah, I don't know if it's real. It's on a TV show that I like. 
Resident okay. Alien. You should watch it. It's really okay, good. Now, There's a physician there. Now Aaron's going to look it up. Okay, so he was like, I kind of feel <laughs> off. I, I won't have, Google during the show, I promise. Uh, I have, what were the symptoms again? I we've So <clears throat> mild headache, heartburn, nasal congestion, skin flushing, and, and seeing blue. blue visual disturbance. Okay. Was, was he playing in a bunch of chemicals or no? No. Oh. Well... And you say his pupil was constricted. Maybe. Was it like like really constricted or no? No, normal pupil exam. Okay, you're you just saying the see difficulty the right of doing it. Yeah. Okay, I gotcha. And um, how long has he felt this way? He's felt this way for about three weeks. Hmm. Why today? Why did he come in today? There was a there was a series of events that occurred today as to the reason why he came in. I, I would like to know about that series of events. What, what happened today? <laughs> so you'll see in 1989, there is this uh, thing which created amazing auroras um, oh. in March. There was this uh, celestial event. There were two <laughs> eclipses that year. And uh, in Colorado, you could see amazing views of the aurora borealis. Mm. During this time, there was a solar flare that knocked out a lot of the communication in the area. Okay. He did he did he sir did you did you look at the eclipse directly? I did not look at the I did inadvertently <laughs> recently. I was dumb. I was mad at myself. But um <laughs> Dr. Mike. He did not. Okay. Did he look at the aurora borealis while the sun was flaring at him? Uh yes, but didn't cause any issues as far as he knows. Okay. All right. But it is a reason why he's there. So he thinks does he think that his symptoms are brought on by a celestial event? Uh, no. No. Were his symptoms brought on by a celestial <laughs> event? They were not. Okay. <laughs> so then why does it matter that there was a celestial event? Because it's, <sighs> it's a part of the story, man. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh... People are going to think we're bad doctors because we can't figure out what you're getting at. But Okay. So you did no an eye idea. exam. Right. Okay, good for you. You've done neuro, a general neuro exam. exam. We did it. We did exam. a what? I didn't do that. Well, you did. You looked I at did the neuro exam. How's that? Neuro exams. Totally oh, a normal. general exam. I yeah, thought you yeah. said something else. Okay. <laughs> so we do a nasal <laughs> exam. He's got congestion. Yeah. What's it look like? Is it all boogers? It looks normal. No boogers. Nope. So he's lying about the congestion? No, he feels congested. So you have okay. tender, you just don't see tender sinuses? Does mm-hmm. so he have tender nope. push on the sinuses? Nope. Mm-mm. How's What's his uh, throat exam like? Normal. Hmm. What's his neurologic exam is he walking normally is he yeah. got any nystagmus which we just no about? nystagmus Mike, if, no if you nothing. make us ask you about every bit of the exam and you tell us it's all normal in the end <laughs> the, well, it's gonna, <laughs> what's his, what's it his visual be. acuity it's normal uh-huh. <laughs> congestion <laughs> headache, do, do some other big examy things big examy things <laughs> listen okay. to his lungs clear <laughs> push on his heart belly. listen to his heart soft okay what about his but heart there's a weird when you're doing his abdominal examination, he appears to be guarding over his pelvis, voluntarily guarding, hmm. like covering pee? up. He does not have to pee, but he seems really like. Do you nervous. want us to do a genital exam, Mike? You can. Kind of. Okay, let's do it. Aaron, go do <laughs> a right, genital exam. Not, let's get a chaperone. Let's get a chaperone first. Mm-hmm. I am not your Nurse, chaperone. No, I need. I need. Did you get the chaperone, chaperone yet? Uh, sure. All right. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I just got to take a look down. I'm a little the worried stairs. as to why you thought Elba should be here for this episode at this <laughs> specific moment, but I'm going to let it play I, out. I don't know why you're a little tender in the pelvis, mm-hmm. and I have no idea why. No, and it's a micasode, no, it, so I'm going to look not... at your genitals. Yep, and there's a boner. <laughs> he has an erection. He has an erection. Okay, sir. Do you have any back pain? Did you fall? Wait, did <gasps> wait? No, hold on, hold on. Did did a new medicine come out? N- oh. No. But oh. No, he he's a part of a clinical trial oh. for angina. Oh, oh. Um, so the reason why the solar flare was important is because the phone and the paging system went down, and he was unable to contact his researcher, which he oh. normally would do if he had some weird side effects from this medicine. Oh, I think I know this medicine. All right, yeah, now I think I know. Well, what we're so the drug has a name, and it's called UK dash ninety two thousand four hundred and eighty. Yeah, it sounds like a Very investigational common. drug. Yep. Very common. Mm-hmm. UK, so, so usually usually it starts with the pharmaceutical company. Yeah, often, often it does. Not, not this time. So again, he doesn't have. So he's got this these symptoms. You want to do a workup because he have got, ringing in his ears. He does not. Oh. No, I I get 
I get why he wasn't necessarily immediately forthcoming, but mm -hmm. we did we did a lot of weird things to this guy for him to be like, hey, um, by the way, here's what I'm really here for. And, you know, no, how, how well, long yeah, has he had that this? happens? How long has he had? It this? does happen, but over four hours. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> the magic four hours, sir. <laughs> OK, you didn't get it from the, the introduction. Oh, yeah. You're an emergency physician working the night shift. You're so tired that you could barely stand up straight. You're four <laughs> hours into a really hard shift. Oh, <laughs> In wow. retrospect, I do see the... Uh... Wow. See, this is what happens when Elba's not here. <laughs> Elba needs to chaperone us through the episode at this point. Yeah. So we, he's got a boner. And he's, he's been taking this... This trial now, the country was probably wrong. It should have been in the UK, but whatever. Same difference. Same. Uh, Colorado was essentially the UK of the West, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've always said. That's, sure. Um, a lot of people from Colorado would say that. <laughs> okay. Sure, so the unusual the thing the about this is that this guy. So he's in. It's 1989. They're they're trialing these new investigational drugs, trying to figure out how you can treat angina, mm -hmm. and angina is just chest discomfort from myocardial injury. Um, the first line treatments were nitrates, like nitroglycerin or nitrites, mm -hmm. nitrates. Um, and it, they, they're effective, but there's, you know, the side effect profile, if you use them in excess can be kind of bad. And we see that a lot. We well, because a lot of the of way they work, right? Yes. Yeah, so we give a lot of nitroglycerin and it, it causes, um, vasodilatation. It's interesting because, you know, I probably learned it at one point. Which, if Alba was here, she was would ask cool you to explain to what that means. Why it works. Vasodilatation. Like, yeah, so but well, how? Well, I mean, it makes nitric oxide. So it releases more nit mm, nitric oxide, right? Very good. But what so, does the nitric oxide do? It relaxes the blood vessels. So the blood How? vessels open by doing some kind of intercellular messaging. I don't know. I yeah. Don't so it, part, what it but... does, yeah, it diffuses into smooth muscle cells and it stimulates the production of cyclic GMP. Oh, geez. And that leads to vasodilatation. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Here we are because in the weeds. Because that <laughs> increased cyclic GMP levels <laughs> decrease calcium levels, mm. therefore decreasing smooth muscle contraction look if this was an ip3 messaging system i would have got it immediately but yeah <laughs> sickly, that's that's you would have gotten here yeah some cellular choice, stuff happens you know. and the vessels get bigger that's <laughs> i thought it was interesting the veins get wider bigger yeah, yeah. so more that's girthy. why the some veins of the get more girthy yeah some of the Aaron, side effects happen <laughs> because um you know your your blood vessels dilate so what happens to that in response to that is sometimes your heart rate can go fast it's all veins dilate. So you're going to get dilatation of veins in the head. You're going to get a bad headache, you know, other side effects. So, you know, researchers are looking at, is there some other medicine that we could potentially find that could help with, with this? Hmm. So researchers at Pfizer led by this, um, this guy named Simon Campbell, were looking for like a cleaner alternative to nitro. Mm -hmm. So it can have less side effects in larger doses. Mm -hmm. And that's when they came to these, and again, it's like in the weeds again, but uh, phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Mm -hmm. So Jeez. phosphodiesterases break down cyclic GMP. Oh, geez. Okay. And specifically, the type 5 phosphodiesterase inhibitors are do this very specifically. This is, I just want to point out, this is the least sexy way to talk about a boner pill that I've ever Just heard. wait. Just wait. we just wait. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Mike, are you going to talk? How did you come up with, like, this is what I'm going to do my essay on. Uh, I, I've been wanting to do a penis episode for a long time. Okay. <laughs> and I thought this was a good way to sneak it in. We're already, like, fairly <laughs> deep into said. it. And you can't back out now. <laughs> it's just done. This is like the knife's edge of what I have to edit. Yeah. Well, I just said penis. That's, a, that's, an anatomical... that's an anatomical yeah. term. All right. There you go. Moving okay. along, Mike. All right. So, moving along. All right. You're you're talking so, about phosphodiesterase inhibitors. All right. Continue. Yeah. So in in 1991, they have this clinical trial. It's promising. Or 89 into 91, they're they're trying to see if this thing helps with angina. Is this a safety arm? Like the just random people take it to make sure it doesn't kill you? Because it's usually so, how they start, right? It was all yeah. This was all in healthy volunteers. Right. So, so it was healthy like volunteers. Yeah, looking to see what physiologically happens with these people. And then the interesting part was in 1992, they did, so it was like their phase two clinical trials. They gave it to a bunch of healthy volunteers and it turned out that it probably wasn't going to work well for angina because the half-life was so short. I know nitro has a short half-life as well, Yeah, um, but you'd have to do multiple doses in high doses and the meds just wouldn't work well. And he had some of these other weird side effects like blue tinted vision sometimes at higher yeah, doses. Yeah, I've actually kind of heard about that with uh, this particular brand of this, medication. Yes. 
So um, interestingly enough, some of the volunteers reported erections, and almost all of them were exceedingly embarrassed about it because it's 1991. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't walk around with boners nowadays. It'd be like, hey, TikTok, look at me. Yeah, it, it was a different time, Mike. It's a different time. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so nitrous oxide is important for blood vessel regulation, but it also regulates erections. Mm. And again, more weird sciencey stuff. That can I say that. I really appreciate how deep of a dive into the science that you did for this particular subject. Yeah, it was I, it I'm was impressed. crazy because I was reading it and I was like, yeah, this is interesting. And then go a little bit deeper. No pun intended. It's like, oh, this is interesting. Go a little bit deeper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's so proud of himself, listener. You should, mm-hmm. He's beaming. Absolutely beaming. <laughs> no, it's just bad lighting. <laughs> so, yeah. So, it, um, it, diffuses into the smooth muscles the the nitric oxide and those smooth muscles are around the blood vessels right so yep, that's how but, you get there but when you mess with phosphodiesterase inhibitor 5 that's in the penis right so those it's that receptor in the is penis. specific to that area of the body well, 5 Oops. through 11 are kind of like okay, in well. that area the other ones are elsewhere not right. in the penis so yeah this medicine or uk whatever Number UK ninety two trial medicine number yes mm-hmm. ultimately gets the name of sildenafil, mm. and you know the generic or the trade name that we know it as is Viagra. Yes, so it, it was it was interesting. So they they did this and they they thought like oh the erection side effect that's kind of funny it's kind of weird. Um, people just didn't seem to be terribly bothered by it. It's not like a ton of them had issues with those prolonged directions that they warn you about. Mm-hmm. And they, they kind of like brushed it aside. And then later on, they're like, this actually might be beneficial for work with erectile dysfunction. Sure. Yeah. Which, which back then was a very challenging to treat issue. We'll go into that too. Don't yeah. worry. There's needles and there's cut downs. Okay, oh. good. Go. In penises. I don't even know how to trigger warning this one. If you have a penis, don't listen what to this What was interesting, so, like, and I learned so much about Viagra that I just didn't know before. <laughs> no, fair, fair. No. no. So, yeah. like, uh, you take Viagra, and apparently it doesn't work unless, unless you get aroused. Fair. So, and that's what set it apart from other things. So some of the guys got boners because some of them got aroused after they took it, but some of them didn't get aroused, so therefore they didn't get boners. I gotcha. What year was this? 92. I was like, was Baywatch on? I mean, they were just like Probably. watching TV all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, Baywatch geez. comes on and no. they're like, wait a second. Or turn on any Motley Crue music video on MTV. Mm. <laughs> like, like, turn on MTV. Or Tawny Katane. Tawny Katane on the roof of that car, White Snake. Is it 92? <laughs> I feel like that was before then. It might have been. But that mm. would have been playing. Maybe you could have seen that on VH1. Sure. So basically, if it, you took it, you sat in a dark room and didn't think about anything, you'd probably be fine. Mm-hmm. Yes, you probably would be fine. Unless the wind blew. You bumped into a chair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a stiff breeze will really get you. Right? Yeah. Aaron. 1992, I was in eighth grade. I don't know that. Yeah, I know what these guys were feeling. Mm. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> More than four hours, man. Yeah. <laughs> Late middle school into high school, you'd be lucky if uh, it wasn't the whole day. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's, we got to <laughs> change classes. Oh, God. I got to stand up. Oh, God. What am I going to do? <laughs> uh, Why are you carrying your backpack in front of you? <laughs> I wish this was our pilot. This was our pilot. I'm sure this show would still be going almost three uh, years later. Elvis <laughs> gone for one episode. <laughs> oh, one. Uh, I knew it was time to release the Kraken when she wasn't here. I was like, this is my only shot. <laughs> Don't let her listen to it either. Okay. Make her uninstall every program she uses to listen to okay, podcasts. So, well, before this, yeah, you needed injections or other weird things if you had erectile dysfunction and there was a story of a urologist that came up with some procedure and apparently he just dropped his pants in front of this conference and injected his penis oh, with what? stuff and he got a boner and then everyone was speechless and it wasn't because <laughs> it worked. They were surprised that he stabbed himself in the penis with needles on a stage in front of, on a stage in front of hundreds mm. of people. It was a different time. Was it, was it at least like a urology conference? I hope it was. Like, yeah. Sir, this is a Wendy's. So, yeah, and we all know Viagra. We've seen commercials for it. You know, the smiley old guys, they, they love it. It's sure. great stuff. Um, sure. It's been sc- prescribed millions of times, and it's the 157th most commonly prescribed drug in the U.S., mm. which I don't know where that lines. Is that like above Oxycontin, below? <laughs> I yeah, don't know. It's probably it's, below, but. Hopefully it's a lot above. Well, and it's been out for a long time, too. I mean, 
right? Uh, 98. I mean, it was yeah. a huge moneymaker for Pfizer, wasn't it? I thought. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, the, I mean, I think that the first year, millions of prescriptions go out. They they talked about initially making it, uh, they can get over the counter. They made it prescription. And then ultimately, I think now you can get over the counter in limited supplies. I don't know. In, in the UK, Mexico, can you, yeah. can you, I don't know. Is it over the counter? Never tried. I'm going to walk into my so. local drugstore and. Well, I mean, in I've been to a pharmacy in Mexico. I think I walked in when we were on vacationing there a couple of years ago, just to see what, yeah, I always heard like you can buy whatever over the counter. I mean, they had the craziest selection of muscle relaxants over the counter. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they had like Soma, which is really addictive muscle relaxant. You just like buy, you know, just buy at the pharmacy, no prescription. So I would not be surprised if they had Viagra. Soma is also my... 100% favorite drug name of all time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh my it God. It makes me think of sleep. Well, I think yeah. it makes you sleepy. So, or me somatic. Yeah. 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 So the, it got better. Like the more I looked, it just got better and better. And I love Viagra. It's my favorite <laughs> drug now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so um, it could be used recreationally as well. I probably knew that already. Sure. The abuse profile is not that much. I mean, like, you get a boner if you take it, but it's not like you're going to get addicted unless you're addicted to getting boners and then you're going to get addicted. <laughs> sure. It's a, it's yeah. a, it is a cycle. But, so is that the, wait, is that the recreational use? Just that? No, side? just wait. Just okay. wait. Okay. So it'll get uh, crushed and mixed with MDMA and other stimulants. Oh, sure. Ecstasy. I mean, that makes sense. I would like to ask you guys to see if you can name the street name. And who knows? This could be just like a Google, like the kids don't mm. actually say this, but give me, see if you can get one of the names. Uh, of the combination of MDMA and Viagra. Gorilla. Nope. Uh, mm, I have no idea. Beetlejuice. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't know, man. <laughs> These things get named. One more. Just give you one more. That was great. I love that. <laughs> one more for the combination. Dolphin back. <laughs> You're going to have to edit this just for us laughing. No, I'm just going to leave Mike in as he's oh. gasping for air. Oh, okay. So, sextasy, that makes sense, oh, right? Yeah, that, that is somehow more G-rated than I thought it was going to be. Oh, these are all G. Rockin' and rollin'. <laughs> okay. I mean, they call it Named MDMA by a person, Molly. A doo-wop band there, in the 40s? I can guarantee you that nobody has ever said that. That people, no. like, Do you have on the internet and are rolling? like, no. what are the kids? What do we think they probably call it? Um, one of my favorite is hammerheading. <laughs> I mean, that, okay. okay. Oh, yeah? And then trail mix. <laughs> oh, man. I don't get that. It's extra nuts in that trail mix. <laughs> Oh, I, I just didn't know. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> it oh. does make sense with, I mean, people will get priapism with ecstasy to begin with, right? With so, priapism? Well, we'll, we'll talk you, about uh, it later. Uh, we'll talk about it later. We'll Karen, about let later. Mike talk about it. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. It, it gets better. <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> so in 2000. <laughs> in, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I can't even look at the words. Our patron content this month is just going to be you wheezing into a microphone. I'm literally, I'm crying. Um, in 2007, the Nobel Prize in Aviation <laughs> went to a group of scientists. Okay, wait. Okay. In two, uh, 2007. I didn't laugh like this when I wrote it down. Uh, in 2007, the Nobel Prize in <laughs> aviation <laughs> went. To... Do, you, do you want me to read it? No. I can read uh, it for you. Yeah. Okay. It went to a group of scientists who discovered that Viagra helps treat jet lag in hamsters. <laughs> What? <laughs> All right, it was worth it. It was worth it. Oh, how do you even measure that? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, what? just like the hamster walking looks... around sleepily, and you're like, don't go to sleep yet. You got to stay up all night. Did the hamsters hamster. get boulders? <laughs> I don't know. 
phone. I don't know if they ever sexed them. They didn't say if it was females or males. I don't know. Okay. Thank you for letting me get through that. It's a big That was rough. That's a big area I typed in that science. without I typed it without issue. I looked at it, I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. And then I looked at the sentence again and I just couldn't. <laughs> All right. So we had treatment for erectile dysfunction before Viagra. The oldest going back to like ancient times is urine therapy. Oh mm, no. Mm, I don't like this one. So you drink your own urine. No. And oh, if you no. drink your own urine, no, that no. would make you get an More erection. More virile? No. no. But then what okay. would you do with it? Because you smell like piss. That's <laughs> <laughs> just don't kiss. <laughs> no kissing. Uh testicle transplants. Our oh, yeah. friend Dr. Gopal's, Dr. Gopal's. John Brinkley. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Call back. Mm, yeah. Yep. Okay. At least that it makes dumb sense on paper if you don't think it, about uh, it. Too uh, you long. know, yeah. Like, it's like, okay. We have identified the sex organs. Yes. Yeah. Check. You get new ones and maybe it'll work. Yep. Like there's a dysfunction in your organ. So let's put goat balls in you. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they got uh, there. You know, goats have never gotten jet lag. It's, <laughs> it's probably true. They don't do Radioactive a lot of suppositories. Oh, no. No, no, yeah. no. I, I didn't look too far into that. Some of these I looked into. That one was just kind of like... Uh, of course, they put something in our butts that's going to that kill seems like a at terrible least idea. some people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, galvanic baths. Like you put electrodes mm-hmm. in a bathtub and then you electrify the water and you sit in it and that's going to... It's going to do a lot of weird stuff. I mean, And then injections. And that's like injecting... Ma- and again, I didn't really look into a Which lot of things. That- I would think is probably not going to be everybody's favorite go-to, you know? Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, you, you didn't look into it, but like, I'm wondering what they were injecting. Um, a lot of it were like vasodilators. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, you'd have to inject. Usually, you've got to inject in both sides of the penis, and then right. like, usually you do that yourself. I don't know if like your partner would do that. Yeah. Depends how good of a partner, I guess. Yeah, and then you think like you'd most likely want that to be a long term partner. Yeah, that's a lot of commitment. Like, oof. Yeah, yeah. Right. And there's the other things, like there's the surgical instrumentation, there's the... Your balloon you know, pump. Like, bal- yeah, pumps. Not balloon pump. <laughs> Not a balloon pump. That's a that aorta your, thing. That makes your main artery go. This yeah. makes your main vein get bigger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I do all these things over... Time of memorial. It it's yeah. thousands of years. It's not surprising that you finally have a simple pill that you can take that seems to work quite well that it becomes such a runaway success because mm-hmm. i mean you've you've alluded to it and maybe you're gonna talk about it more so stop me if so but the it's a big problem right it's a problem that a lot of guys wouldn't want to talk about right and for reasons that are societal that are uh, otherwise kind of seen as like this attack against one's masculinity or your, your your basic functions this pill comes out and it's it's bonkers successful because it's just it's discreet and it works, and it got everybody kind of talking about this, right? I think yeah. maybe you're going to talk about it, but I think that's it's um, it's obviously pretty easy, but some jokes. But it's um, it's kind of an important problem that got solved by a relatively simple medicine, I would think. And and do you know what who or who one of the the people was to bring it to the forefront? One of the premier world's hamster scientists. No, there was a a political figure oh. in the nineties. Political figure in the nineties. Uh there's only a few. Um, if I go like um you, you I want, want you, you to guess do... who it is. Reagan. Uh later than Reagan. Same party, which is the interesting part. George Bush Senior. Um oh shoot. Wait a second. Ah. It was Bob Dole. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bob Dole. <laughs> nice. And then I started to second guess myself. I thought he was a Republican. Mm. I'm pretty sure he was. Yeah, he was. I can't remember. Bezos he ran Republican. in the primary against Bob Dole's Republican. H.W., right? Yeah, yes. I think he was a yeah. senator. Bob right? Dole. Then he lost. So, yeah. The yeah, but he apparently like, did a good thing for men's health at the time. He said it was okay. It yeah. is okay. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it's a huge part of being healthy. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of different medical conditions that you could have erectile dysfunction from, diabetes. Uh, you know, nerve issues, psychological things, drugs, you know, like, so mm-hmm. again, this, it was nice because this pill then th- the nice thing about this, like why it was such a good drug for this is that you could take it and it's not just going to give you a boner unless you get aroused. So it's like, it's for the function. It, it's like, if you like, you take a pain pill and if you're not in pain, it doesn't do anything. Right. It only works right. if you are in pain. Yeah. It's got a targeted mechanism. 
Yeah. So really uh, like very interesting. And, and like, I thought the interesting thing, and I actually didn't know the history behind it, but I thought it was initially developed for uh, pulmonary hypertension. That's what I would have guessed if you would ask me. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I thought. So what happened was that it initially was an antianginal. They discovered the boners. They went down that route. It comes out as Viagra. And then years later, they looked at that for pulmonary hypertension. Huh. Interesting. That like, makes sense. Yeah. Know, like four or five years later. Because pulmonary hypertension is where you have high pressure in the arteries that give your lungs blood flow so that your lungs can put oxygen in there. And the problem is the blood pressure is so high in folks with pulmonary hypertension, which they can have it for a variety of reasons, that blood just doesn't get through the lungs okay. And so the like a, a drug like this or a vasodilating drug would hopefully allow more blood flow through. So that makes sense. That's why they would try to figure out to, if it would work for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was really safe. Like the side effect profile is relatively low. You know, it's the heartburn, headaches. The vision thing was weird. Mm-hmm. Can cause some, some, I think, optic neuritis issues too. But again, I think most drugs can cause a lot of different things. Sure. One thing that Viagra doesn't do is cause priapism. Interesting. Really? Yeah. Not that it hmm. doesn't. So like the, the risk is, is relatively low. Uh, you know, I think and it's less than 2%. did we define priapism? Forgive me if we did. Oh, so priapism is uh, uh, an erection that lasts longer than four hours without stimulation that can potentially cause nerve and tissue damage. Yeah. So it may not work, again, correctly, if at all, if not mm-hmm. dealt with, basically. Yeah. So the um, so Viagra is, is less likely to cause priapism than typical antipsychotics, trazodone, hmm. cocaine. Fair. Um so, yeah, if you don't want to get priapism, don't do cocaine. It's a good... Solid message. We don't give medical mm-hmm. advice, but that's just good general advice. That's yeah, something general to know. advice. Yeah, that... Priapism is most commonly caused by sickle cell disease. Yeah, mm-hmm. makes sense. Cause Again, it, it can be from drugs. It's an obscure... Basically, the sickled cells, which are... It's a genetic condition. Uh, they change their shape. The red blood cells change their shape. They clog up arteries and veins basically and it's a very painful condition but yeah so it clogs up the outflow right is it the outflow Mm -hmm. from the i think it's outflow yeah yeah Yeah, because there's a couple different types of priapism that we're not going to get into but right right so just saying it can be non-drug related basically is what Mm -hmm. you're getting at yep yeah and again if it goes on too long and that's why the four hour thing it's like it can cause nerve and tissue damage and then yeah you're taking a pill to make your penis work and then it just stops working after that Mm -hmm. as it wears off Um, don't let it go so for priapism, there have been treatments over time that are very interesting and oh some boy. relatively new. So in 1872, the treatment was morphine and leeches, and they were onto something. They just put <laughs> leeches on your penis. They <laughs> suck out the blood. That's went. Not, yep. not bad idea, yeah. actually. And then there, you know, it's probably gone. one of the best uses of leeches ever. I was going to say, it makes the most sense. In the morphine, mm-hmm. just to, what, deal with the fact that you have leeches all over your Probably penis? a little pain, a little maybe it did a little vasodilatation like morphine can do. That's, I think it's mostly and just probably just to tolerate leeches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In 1928, there was this doc by the name of Dr. Colson who decided it might be a good idea to inject heparin. They just discovered heparin, hmm. and they're like, "Let's put it in people's penises that are right. <laughs> fair." And I don't know as if one it does. Yeah, I don't know what they're thinking. Well, were they thinking? I guess were they thinking maybe. That's happening because the blood can't get out, and if we thin they, it, it'll get out of there yep. easier. They thought it was a clotting issue. Uh, it is. Uh, it can be. Yeah. So, not, not. Yeah. Um, then 1957, which is a lot later than I thought, um, a Dr. Stephen Brody was the first person person to ever aspirate uh, penis. Which <laughs> means talk about aspirate. <laughs> yeah, you should really define yeah. that one closely. Aspirate with a needle, I assume. Uh, with a needle, yeah. And this is one of those procedures that I think we all were terrified of in residency. We just don't want to see it. And then, especially being young males, you know, mm-hmm. just to think about what what that means for that person. And you put yourself in that position. I think it, when you when you D2MS an erection with an 18-gauge needle. Literally needles, needs to make it go flaccid. Yeah. When you do that, you realize, like, your own morbidity comes in and you you could feel it almost like i could feel this on me like it's a voodoo doll yeah i mean <laughs> interesting i never it's thought i, I have never thought about it that way but <laughs> I, I haven't had that quite yeah 
You said this hurts. This hurts me more than it hurts you. Is this... I, yeah. I mean, there's a certain empathy I think you can you oh, can yeah. have during it's that. It's also procedure. just a very awkward situation for everybody. That's why involved. I offer. Well, yeah, but you, that's why I offer sedation. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I don't know that I've ever. I have. Yeah. Have you? I've done yeah. it under local, oh, and I've done, done it. Uh, well, then I. Sedation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's usually under local for sure. Um, but yeah, so you do all the things you could do to not have to do that, you know. And once you do enough, it's like it's fine. I could do this. And people actually tolerate it really well. At least they say it's, that they do. Most of it like, is the idea of it. Like the idea of it is one of the hardest parts to get, to wrap your mind around. Mm-hmm. And then actually doing the procedure, it generally is not as bad as it sounds. It's just, it is a thought of it that is rough. For, yeah. But yeah. it's a big, I mean, it's a needle that normally people would notice as what appears to be large. So after mm-hmm. you anesthetize. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you do have to just, place the needle into the side of the penis and draw the blood out kind of right at the midway. And then usually on both sides, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, not always because they do commun- There's two little, what two little caverns in there. Yeah. Typically so, it's going to be in both, but yeah, so there's, there's a pretty significant, I guess there's avoidance, a lot of avoidance factor, which is very <laughs> yeah. understandable. Yeah. There's just a lot of blood. And the the need again, just like the way the needle gives, I don't know, like it's not my favorite procedure. I don't, I don't know. No, not at all. It, yeah, so you could try terbutaline. It's a med. It's an injection that you can give that might help. It never like does, the, but you the, could try. Yeah, it. it's a and it's it's like the opposite of a vasoconstrictor. It's trying to constrict the smooth muscle back down, right? Yep. Yeah, because it works on that same cyclic GMP. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, then you then you stick the needle in and you will inject some phenylephrine. Same thing again, trying to like instead of vasodilate, you're trying to constrict the vasculature so it, it mm-hmm. clamps down and gets the blood out of there. Yeah, and that's a little needle, and sometimes that works. Mm-hmm. I've had that work. And then, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you got to go to the, the big 18-gauge needle and draw off just all that blood, and it's mm-hmm. a mess. And... But it, it, it's, uh, it's to save the function. Mm-hmm. And so... You usually wrap it up in an ace wrap, so it looks like a little mummy. Or and, Coban, yeah. Yeah, just... It's, mm-hmm. <laughs> just you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, I anyway. Think some, you, know, you have to go to surgery, too, if it doesn't work. So. Yep, Yeah. That's the last resort. Yeah, some are really tough to, you know, some of the high flow ones. So there are issues where there's like high flow into the penis. So you could suck all the blood you want out. It's not going to go away. Mm-hmm. It'll just fill right back up again. Right, right. That's a, that's usually, is that, is that a surgical cause? They have to like do. That one, yeah, they do shunting. Yeah, that. that's right. That's right. We'll see. And again, we don't give medical advice, but you should go in. Yes. Even though we're describing something that's not going to be very fun for anyone. Yes. Emphasis on the, it's not as bad as you think it would be. It's not as bad yeah. as you think. It's not as bad for you. It's worse for us. <laughs> <laughs> that's accurate. But cool. uh, I am bringing it to a close. Okay. Yep, I'm going to stand firm that mm. this is the end. Uh, Fair enough. Oh, no, no, no. One last thing. Uh-huh. Priapism can occur in women as well. Really? It's called clitoral priapism. Hmm. It's rare, but it can happen. Interesting. Ultra rare. Ultra rare. Well, all these all these tissues are made from the same same embryonic sources, so that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, I just I didn't look to see what the treatment was. Yeah, I don't know that I would be. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's a the same structure. Yeah. All right, Fair we're uh, just really showing off our knowledge of uh-huh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> just 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 proving. <laughs> all right. Well, Mike, that was uh, that was different. It was different. It was informative. Yeah, I like to sneak these in because again, I I knew that it wasn't going to be like I don't want to call it subtle. There's a there's a good movie about this invention and when it gets sold. There's a twenty love and other drugs. It's called. I had to look oh, it up, but I do. Oh, remember I've it. heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal and Anne Hathaway. It's got some. I thought it was Jake headliners. Gyllenhaal. I thought it was Gyllenhaal, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's a it's a yeah. I remember it being a a, a fun time mm. at the movies. So okay. nice. Excellent. Well, there you go. Well, I think that about does it. So, Aaron, since your name starts with A and we're without an Alba tonight, what was the most important thing you learned on this episode? Uh, that what was the name of that place in Colorado? Is is the UK of the West? Patience. The patients. <laughs> patients. Patience Colorado. Is the UK of the West. That's what I learned. The rest of it. Ah, perfect take home <laughs> message. Do you guys not know? The show Resident Alien, no, featured no, on I, Netflix. I, I do not. It's know a that wonderful show. program. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll challenge you both to watch it. Challenge you to a Netflix duel. 
We appreciate everyone listening, and we'd love to hear from all of you out there. If you'd like to check out our merchandise or provide feedback, we can be reached through our website, www.forhistoriansfod.com. There you can send us messages and find links to our social media sites. We do work to respond to all posts on those accounts. If you want to participate in the show, use our site to send us a medical history trivia question for Mike. And if you're looking for a way to contribute to the show or be a special part of the House of Medical History, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash poor historians podcast. A free way to support us is to tell a friend about us or go and leave a nice five star review on Spotify, iTunes or whichever platform you choose. So that's certainly an option. And if you're a gamer or just want to hang out while someone else, meaning me, plays video games, check me out on Twitch. Be the link in the show notes. So until next time, Poor Historians are signing out AMA. Uh, but I will, um, I should just take a super cut of all the things I take out. Maybe I can put that together. It'll be the outtake. It'll <laughs> yeah, just be nothing but you wheezing. <laughs> You got to leave some of those laughs in there, though. A lot oh, of I will. No, I will. I, I, I love when I listen to a show and it's like you could hear them break. That's that's actually. I'm sorry, I couldn't stop charming. laughing. I'm sure, Max is just sitting there going, either. "Oh God." I'm it, glad I couldn't. See I just you died. He's a designated out. driver. He's like, yeah. <laughs> no. So, uh, so yeah. No, I think, and our, I will say too, a few of our fans online who are not patrons were like, "You guys don't do outtakes anymore." I don't know if you saw me post about that, um, but I posted uh somebody was like yeah we, you guys don't have outtakes anymore and i was like well yeah it's because we've had for the last six months perfect takes the whole time so we haven't <laughs> you know we haven't had to not no yeah, more you probably yeah i just thought it'd be yeah yeah no it's fun it, that was a fun one it was all right so, well <laughs> but you probably can't leave that in there no i won't i try to preserve your professional image as much as i can it's <laughs> It's difficult. That's a good one. That's a good. It is an interesting. Like, when did it? it yeah, that's worthwhile. Oh, by the way, um, tell me. I'm trying no not notes. to lean into my microphone so much because mm-hmm. last episode, actually, I blew out my sound a little bit. Not not did so you? bad that it wasn't savable, but it was it was a little bit close. So I'm going to sit right here, Whoa. and if you hear me getting too loud, just yell at me. <laughs> like I'm, I'm like I'm a friend that bites their nails. Aaron, you know, Aaron's giving the microphone the Tinder treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's Patreon content. Mm-hmm. Either oh, way, buddy. Plenty of fish treatment. Sorry. <laughs> Disclaimer. N- no, Mike. Edits. I don't even know how to. Uh... No edits in that one. Yeah, not not a single one. Uh, I don't <laughs> even know how to like. I gotta put like. It's fine to talk about male genitalia, but I uh-huh. I don't even know how to put a disclaimer because I know a lot of people may listen to our show with their children in the car and stuff. <laughs> well, um, maybe if it's just in the title. You know, because a lot of the ones I yeah, do, they're put, like no, I secret. will put. Well, this is like I, I would put. I'm just trying to think. This this has to like, be like uh, we're going to like sexual content, or I mean, we're going to talk about male genitalia. Uh, and, yeah, maybe, and Mike wrote mm-hmm. the episode should be <laughs> yeah most of the that's, disclaimer. Um, that should do it. I uh, I should feel we do have. There's um I don't know that they listen to the episode, but there is a urologist that will frequently comment on some things on threads when i post them oh boy nice. uh, i'm very curious to know if uh this is something he checks out nice. <laughs> just we'll see what he criticism says. it's coming your way <laughs> great uh, i should I'll just beef with him online mm, i should um he seems like a nice guy actually there will be some discussion of procedure done to male genitalia in a non-graphic form but it's in there just so you know that too